Hello everyone and welcome to another Fusion 360 Live. My name is Brad Tallis from Autodesk. Um, on the keyboard I have my friend Angelo helping out, so if you have any questions as we go through today's session, uh, please feel free to post them out there. Um, I know some of you probably have some questions about the recent change um, that Autodesk did. Um, and I would say the, the best thing to do is to go out to the community forum and this is in regards to some of the changes that have been made to the um, hobby or the personal. So if you go under Fusion 360 Design, Validate and Document, you'll see the changes coming to Fusion 360 for personal use. I would recommend going to that because there's a frequently asked questions. Um, a lot of your questions will probably get asked in there. And if you have any questions, you can post stuff out there. So. Uh, I know there was some some questions about um, oops let me sorry some questions about the um, limit of ten files or ten projects or whatever it is I I'm actually personally don't know exactly everything about it quite yet also so I do recommend going out to that blog uh, if you have any questions related to that today we're gonna continue on we're going to work on this part here uh, what I'm calling the gearbox. Um, and as I was going through and kind of prepping this thing, I realized that there's not a lot of symmetry on this thing. So there's going to be quite a few um, steps that we're going to do to create this. Um, you're going to uh, learn some cool tricks, uh, for example, creating these little um, indentations or standoffs, I should say, on that curved surface, etc. So um, I did put the outline and the drawing for this part in the description of the video. So please feel free to uh, download those um, out of the description uh, when you have some time. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and jump in from where we left off last time. And we, we finished creating this other half of the base. Now I want to use information from that base to kind of help me design this next part. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new component, okay, because we've done the base component, which actually has two bodies in there, has both sides. Then we also have the, um, the basket, what I'm calling the basket, and then the, the middle ring, which we're going to come back to those later on, you know, add some details, maybe some textures and some appearances. So I'm going to right mouse click up here and say new component. And I'm going to call this guy Gear Housing. So I'm just typing in the name. I'm going to have it be active. So when I say OK, you'll see the other ones are turned off. And the Gear Housing is the active component. I'm probably going to start with a sketch. So I'm going to create a sketch on this front plane. And I want to capture some information from this base part. So I'm going to go to project or the shortcut key is the P key and there's a couple things I want to capture I want to know where this line here is and then also the part sits on this little shelf that we created so I'm going to project that guy also and then lastly I kind of want to know where this inside curved surface is I'm just going to grab that corner point uh, up in this corner right here because I'm going to line some stuff up with that corner point. So you'll notice when I project that, it grabs the information and projects it onto my sketch. Okay, then I'm going to basically create a revolve. So the first thing I usually do is I start with a, a line to revolve around like an axis. So you'll notice as I get kind of near the center of this projected line, it automatically snaps to the midpoint. And then I'm going to go up. Um, I want to make sure I'm pointing vertical. And I'll just go up two inches in this case. Now, in my outline, which I don't have up right now, um, I have a, a drawing. Actually, you'll see it here in the drawing also. Um, I'm going to basically create this profile here, just half of it. I did the whole thing here to, to do the diameter dimensions, but we're basically going to be creating half of this. And so that's what I'm going to do for the next few steps. But you'll notice 
that these dimensions are diameter dimensions. So we're gonna learn a cool trick with that. Um, so I'm going to just quickly kind of draw a profile of um, the overall shape, okay? Now, um, I'm not worrying too much about dimensions per se. I'm just kind of getting the basic shape down. Um, I am kind of, you know, making sure that I'm kind of lined up, you know, vertically and horizontally. I mean, I could come back and add those constraints later on if I want to. Uh, I'll just do something like this. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of draw basically what's on the uh, in the outline or whatever. Uh, come out here. Go up a little bit, over a little bit, down. And again, I'm just kind of getting the basic shape. Now, you might be saying, well, how would you know what this basic shape looks like? And and again, I'm we're kind of taking this from the idea that um, you know, we're, we're using the existing model um, and we're coming up with a part that we're going to revolve around and has some, some weird extensions and all that kind of stuff on it. So created a bunch of horizontal and vertical lines. You can see all the, the um, perpendicular icons that were automatically created, the constraints. Now I'm going to come back and start to define the actual size of these according to the drawing um, using those diameter dimensions. So check this out. Typically when you click a line like for example that line there and that line there it gives me the length. Okay so it's 1.514. If I right mouse click you'll notice I get the option diameter dimension. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and you'll see now my cursor's kind of changed a little bit and it's allowing me to type in the total diameter since this is a circular object and maybe I only know the diameter because I've used a mic you know, digital micrometer or something like that to take measurements. It's much easier to do the diameter than it would be to figure out the radius, for example. So in this case, this is 3.2, okay? Now sometimes it jumps it above the line. I'm gonna pull these down just because we're gonna do a couple of these. And I'm gonna do that again. Now there is a catch. Um, you'll definitely want to select the center line first. So let me show you that. So I'm gonna click on the center line. Then I'm gonna click on this other line. Then before I place the dimension, I'll right mouse click and say diameter dimension. And now you can see that it's doing the diameter dimension. Um, that guy is supposed to be uh, 2.8, it looks like, 2.8, okay. Now let me do it the wrong way. Um, I'll come in here, I'll pick on this line here and that line there. I'll say diameter dimension and notice where my dimension is going to. So the first line is basically the center line of the diameter. So just remember that as you're doing these dimensions. So center line, then that guy, diameter, I'll place that there, I think it's uh, 2.6, my eyesight's getting bad, yep, 2.6, okay, um, and I'm just going to move these so they kind of point to the line that they're kind of going to, okay, a couple more here real quick, I'll do this guy, and that guy, diameter, uh, 1.71, uh, I think it's this outside, so I'm going to do a center line, this outside line, diameter. And like I said, a lot of this um, was kind of you know weird sizes and nothing really lined up. It was really kind of weird as I started creating this um, model, taking measurements from it, for example. Okay, so this last one here is 0.39. Okay. Um, and so you can kind of see my, my sketch sort of updated accordingly. Some of the lines um, are now constrained. We can see that by the difference in color. Um, and now I'm going to come in and start adding some of the other dimensions. And I did this in basically two sketches to kind of help you out and make it so it's not so crowded. So we basically just did this sketch here. Now I'm going to come in and start adding like the heights of some of these little shelves and stuff. 
and the, the widths of some of the stuff that's going to get revolved. So I'm just going to add a couple more dimensions. I don't need to do the diameter dimension anymore. So um, and watch what happens to these lines as I start to add in dimensions. You'll see that they're going to become fully constrained. So that's 07. I'll come up here and um, 0.333. OK, now um, it's a little hard to tell. Um, but in my outline, this line here is actually lined up with that line there. In fact, I don't have a dimension on the drawing. Um, so I want this line to be at the same level as that. So I'm going to use a horizontal constraint. So I want that point to be horizontal with that point. And you can see how it kind of jumped up a little bit. And now they're lined up with each other. And it's fully constrained. Okay, um, same thing with these guys here. They're supposed to be two inches tall. So I'm going to do the same thing. I want that point to be horizontal vertical with that one and that point to be horizontal vertical with that one. Or I could have said this one's collinear with this one. I mean, there's a couple of different solutions there for you that you could use. Um, okay, so this guy here, um, point zero 0.08, I think it is. 0 0.066, sorry, 0 0.066. And then um, this height here, 0.125. Um, we can kind of see this uh, edge right here. Um, I want that to be at the same height as this projected inside edge, because this is basically the, the flange. You can kind of see it's how it's following along. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say horizontal, vertical and move that up there so we can see that that's constrained. And then I want um, the same thing with all of these guys. So I want all of these lines here to be lined up with that. So um, kind of do the same thing. I'm just going to say horizontal vertical and just grab these points. Okay. I think I let me see. I'm, nope, I'm, I lied. My bad. I'm gonna undo real quick. <laughs> I see. I do have a dimension in there. Okay, so I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can kind of see what's going on. Okay, so there is a a small dimension from this line to this line. That's what I was missing. Um, 0 0.06. Okay, and then these I want to be in line with that. So I'll do the collinear. That line and that line, and you can see how it brought it up that line and that line and it brought it up so now they're collinear with each other and then I think um, there's a dimension here 0 0.08 and again this is all on the drawing um, so I'll, I'll point that out here real quick 0 0.04 I know this is a lot of typing in dimensions I apologize um, and then this is 0 0.05 and now as I'm looking at my sketch everything looks like it's fully constrained okay um, I could draw a line that goes from here to that point there and now I've closed that profile so we can kind of see that that's a fully closed profile okay Again, that was just using all of these dimensions from these two kind of like sketches you see on the drawing. So I just typed in all of these different dimensions. This was that, that one dimension that I was missing right here. Okay, so now I have my fully defined sketch. I'm gonna finish my sketch. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna turn off the base. And we're gonna do a revolve. Now it's asking for the profile. You'll, now you'll notice my projected line is cutting my profile. It's cutting through my profile. So I need to make sure I select all three of those regions. And then this is going to be my axis. This is what everything is kind of based on. And you can see that it took that shape, that sketch shape, and it's creating a bunch of different shapes because of that. Now, I see there's different methods you could do this. Um, some people call it the cake method, where they might draw this shape and then extrude it up, 
and then they create this sketch and extrude it up and then they create this sketch and extrude it up almost like you're layering a cake you could totally do that but in something like this I find um, you know with kind of how complex this is I find the revolve command be to be a little bit simpler okay now like I mentioned before we're gonna use existing geometry to help us change our design and this face right here actually let me turn off this guy this face right here is supposed to be curved and not sticking out of the model I actually want it to follow the curvature of the uh, the base here I'm gonna use the basket I'll show you why here in just a second but we're gonna use the replace face command you'll know this is one of my favorite commands so the source face I'm gonna click and hold until I can probe through and select that face because by default it's wanting to select this front curvy face up here I want to select that one and so I'm gonna probe through until you see it you know select the different faces I'll say that's the face what's my target that face there and you can see that it's gonna change that flat face and make it follow that curved face I'll say okay let's turn off the basket and let's turn on the base now you'll notice let's turn up the base um, you'll notice uh, an issue here so it's following this surface here and it actually needs to be inside but if I tried to do a replace face I only have half of a face and that would fail okay um, the surface that you're using to replace has to be bigger than the surface you're changing and in this case it's not it's only half of it so that's why I ended up using this face because it was bigger and it's a solid face it goes all the way around you can see it totally encompasses that so we did have to use the basket to to do this but then we can use like the uh, offset face command to move it down to the correct distance that we want so for example I could come in here and say offset face I'll pick this curvy face here now it's asking for a distance well I could type it in but I could also click on a face I should have let me get a second here oh I'm sorry <laughs> I see what I did let me go uh, offset face start to drag sorry it was ask it was asking me to select more faces so I'm going to start to drag the correct direction and then I can click on that face and you'll see that it jumped down the correct distance so it's actually matching that curved face in there so let me do that again really quick since I sort of messed that up so I just go into the offset face command tell it that's the face I want to offset and you'll notice because it has an S right there I could select multiple faces to offset so I'm going to just start to drag and so now it's wanting to know the distance and I can just click that other face and it'll snap right to it instead of me having to measure or type it in or anything like that okay um, let me see it's kinda of hard to see on the model itself but there's there's some flat flat faces on the side right here <laughs> it's kinda of hard to point to right where my finger is so we're gonna simulate that we're gonna create those guys um, and I found the easiest way of doing that let me turn off the base I'm gonna just create a sketch on this top face here create a sketch okay and I'm gonna use the rectangle command so R for rectangle and in my sketch palette you'll see the three different kinds of rectangles one of them being a center rectangle I'm gonna use that guy and click this center point right here and now you'll notice that when I create this rectangle it's coming from the center instead of corner to corner so I want to change the um, width of this to be 2.47 okay and you'll notice that it's now locked in the width now I don't really care about the height as long as it extends you know past this region right where my cursor is you can kind of see we're going to use this rectangle um, 
to kind of define a profile. So we're going to basically shave this stuff off. Now to do that, I'm going to create another center rectangle because I have to have a closed profile. So check this out. I'm just going to do something like this. And now you can see I've got this closed profile. Well, I don't want it to um, extrude anything else. So I could, because this is far enough away, I could just extrude, but I'm gonna show you another tip that you could do. I wanna basically create this little region right here. And you'll notice that my rectangle, my center rectangle created some construction geometry. Well, I can select that and turn it to not be construction geometry. And now I have a closed region just right here. Instead of all the way around like it used to be, I'm just dealing with this little region by changing the construction line to an object line. Okay? So then I can use this profile, extrude, and I want to shave this region off right here. So you can kind of see as it's starting to cut, it's going to remove some of that, that cylindrical shape. Well, I want it to go right to that face. So we'll say, um, instead of distance, we'll say to object. And I want it to go to this object right here, this face right there. And you can see it's going to machine and cut that down right to that face. So we just shaved that corner off. Now I'm only going to do it on one side because we're going to use the mirror command here in just a second. Um, I want to fillet these edges, so I'm going to say fillet. I'll say 0.25, again according to the drawing. And I've now just kind of created that little area right there. Now obviously I want this on the other side, so I'm going to come in here and instead of reusing my sketch or you know having to do another extrude and some more fillets I'm just gonna come in here and say mirror making sure that if this is set to faces we want to mirror features so I'm gonna say mirror features and I want to mirror the extrude feature and the fillet feature I can do both at the same time what's my mirror plane I'll go ahead and click that guy there. We can see how it's going to mirror straight across. And I now have that region removed along with the fillets on both sides. So kind of a quick way of uh, making some symmetry. And if I ever need to come back and change it, I only have to change one thing and the mirror will update accordingly. Okay, now I'm going to do some fillets, and I've shown this tip before, but I really think it's, it's pretty cool. I'm going to fillet this edge, and because chain selection is turned on, or I'm sorry, ta tangent chain is turned on, it's going to chain all the way around because all of these edges are tangent with each other. And I can come in and tell it I want that to be 0.1, and you'll see how it fillets all the way around. Well, I also want to add a fillet to this edge and a fillet to this edge. Instead of having three separate fillet features, I could come in here and say, I want to add a new selection. And let's do that edge there. And I want it to be um, 0 0.04. Okay. Then I can also say, add another selection. I'll do this guy here, and I want him to be 0 0.03. So I have three different sized fillets, all in one fillet feature in the timeline. So it kind of simplifies your timeline a little bit. And I'm kind of doing all of these fillets that sort of define the shape of this part um, all together. And that's kind of why I like to do it you know, all in one uh, fillet feature. Okay, like I mentioned before, uh, I, I need to put some, I mean, I'll show you guys here real quick, I need to put some holes in here and they're not straight up and down or horizontal vertical, there's no pattern or anything like that unfortunately. So I'm going to show a neat trick on creating multiple holes pretty quickly. Um, but to do that, I'm going to create a sketch on this face because that's kind of where the holes are going to be is on this face. 
So I'm going to create a quick sketch. And I want to grab some information from this uh, 3D model. So I'm going to project this outside edge of this little fillet right here. Because I want to um, put the holes right on that edge. So I'm going to project that geometry. And then I'm going to use construction geometry to help me with my design. So I'm just going to draw a line, like so, and turn it to construction geometry. Okay, So it's not an object line or anything like that. Then, again, according to the drawing, I'm just going to draw some lines. Now what I do want to make sure of is that I'm catching to this projected edge. And you'll notice it kind of turns to a little X or kind of a cross right there. So I can go ahead and click, and it created the um, coincident constraint for me automatically. So again, I'll just do another one here that's touching that edge. I'll do another one here that's touching uh, that edge there. And then finally one over here, making sure that they're not you know, automatically trying to be parallel because they're not. <laughs> so I'm just adding three lines, or four lines. I'll turn these guys to construction geometry. Okay. Then I can kind of finish constraining them by using some dimensions. So I'm going to say from that edge there to that edge there, you'll see it'll allow me to do an angle. So I could say that's supposed to be 15. And that line rotates and stays coincident on that circle. So I can do the same thing here. I'll click those two lines. I'll put it maybe there, um, and that's supposed to be 85. And you'll see that that line updated. Um, I'll go this way for these two lines, just so you can kind of see that's supposed to be 100. And finally, here to here. Um, and if that one's supposed to be uh, 170. And so I was able to kind of mock up where the lines, were, you know, pretty close to where they were supposed to be. They're coincident with that circle, and now I came in and tied them down. You'll notice that they're black, um, so that means that you know it, my sketch is constrained. Okay, so now I have, you'll notice those four black points, okay? I can use that using the hole command. So I'm going to come in here and say create hole. And you'll notice at the very top, it says placement at point for a single hole or placement from sketch for multiple holes. So I'm going to do that one. Um, I also want to do, um, let me go ahead and just click on a location like so. I'm going to do a simple hole. I don't need it to be tapped or anything like that. And I'm also going to make it flat. And you'll see why here in just a moment. Okay. Now, according to the drawing, the depth is supposed to be 0.3. And the diameter is 0.15. Okay. I can kind of see the, the preview of how deep that is. Now, you'll notice this is a solid model. We're going to shell it out here pretty soon. And by doing these holes first, we're going to save ourselves quite a bit of time. You're going to see a, kind of a neat tip. Okay, and remember I did multiple holes, so all I have to do is just click around and it's going to use the information and allow me to click multiple points that were from a sketch to place those holes. So I'll go ahead and say OK, and sure enough, there are those simple 0.15 diameter by 0.3 deep holes. Okay, now obviously this model is hollowed out, or I would say shelled out, so we are going to do that. I kind of got the majority of the shape that I want before I do the shell command. So I'm going to come up here and shell. Let's pick this bottom face and start to drag, and you'll see how it's shelling. And now you can kind of see why we did those holes ahead of time. They're going to allow us to create these little standoffs basically automatically by doing this. So I'm opening up the bottom and then I also want to be able to look down through the top. So I'm going to select that face also 
And so now it's totally hollowed out. You can see how our fillets come through, the ones that we, uh, we created already. So that's why you do your shell kind of later on in your process. Once you have the outside kind of designed the way you want, then you come in and do the shell. So now we got, you know, somewhat complicated looking part pretty quickly. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to do is to create these little uh, mounts on the side. There's, there's two of them. <laughs> so we're going to create those. And again, I'm going to use um, existing geometry to help me out. So I'm going to turn the base back on. My gear housing is still my active component. You can see we have one body. Here's where my sketches are. I like to expand those open because we'll be turning them on and off. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new sketch on this front plane. Now some of you might ask, well, couldn't you use the original sketch that you did? And I could, but I like to break things down kind of into chunks, into regions and stuff like that. So this sketch really has to do with the overall shape of the original design, right? This sketch is basically gonna be focusing just on, <coughs> excuse me, those little screw mounts on the side. Okay, um, so I need to project. I want to grab that hole right there. I'm also going to project um, this fillet. And then finally this edge here, because I'm gonna grab some information from that. And then I'll turn off the part we don't need anymore. And you can see, I now know exactly where that screw boss is, okay? So I don't have to take any measurements or anything like that. I'll go ahead and just quickly kind of mock up what this um, overall shape is supposed to look like. Um, I know I want to maybe catch to the, the center like so. And I'll just come across like that. Then, I'll just create a quick rectangle here, something like that, okay? So I'm starting to get the shape that I'm looking for. Obviously, I want to you know, tie this down. Um, so I'm going to say I want that edge tangent to that circle, that edge tangent to that circle. So it's the correct width. I might trim this segment out right here. I don't need that. And then I might start dimensioning some stuff. So um, I want this height here to be, um, well, that was pretty close, 0.2, okay? And I want this overall width to be um, off of this edge, I'll say 0.35 in this case, according to the drawing. And then I might come in and add an angle here. I want that to be 170. Now I want these edges to be the same width. So I'll come in here and say uh, equal, that edge and that edge. And you'll see how it kind of moved that angle up and my sketch is constrained. Now you'll notice that it's not a closed sketch. In fact, if I were to turn off the body, you'll see that it's not a closed sketch. But that's okay, because we are going to finally use the rib command. So I've shown the web command quite a bit. I really like it. It's, it's, it allows you to do some pretty cool stuff. But so does the rib command. And this is a prime example of where the rib command is really useful. So I'm going to say rib. And it's asking for a curve. Well, I'm going to go ahead and click on this edge right here. It doesn't matter this profile and sometimes you'll get a result that looks like this okay and if you do just hit the flip direction but you can see that it's basically taking that profile and extending it to the body to the to the next body basically okay in fact if I were to flip it this way you can kind of see how it's doing that also and then I can just come in and specify um, how thick I want the um, rib to be. So in this case, I'm going to do, actually I already typed it in, let's do the 0.04 so you can kind of see changing 
the width or the thickness right there. Okay, so let's just do 0 0.08 in this case. Notice how it's wrapping around the fillet for me automatically. So it's a really fast way of creating a complex shape. Now I could have, you know, closed my profile by drawing a line down through the model, but you know, we've got some shelled walls in here and stuff, and that might be a little bit difficult. So the rib command, very, very useful. Okay. And just like before, I'll go ahead and mirror the feature. I'm going to mirror the rib feature over to the other side. We'll say OK. And there we go. And if I change one of them, you know, they'll, they'll both change. Let me uh, crank that to be pretty thin. I'll say OK. And you'll see that they, they both change. Cool. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is these little indentations that go all the way around this model. Okay. Um, as I was messing around with this, I tried pattern on a path where I just drew one of them and I um, patterned it around. Well, it, it didn't follow the path. It started to twist and do some really weird stuff. Well, I got to thinking we just added the emboss command could I use the emboss uh, command to do this? And the answer is yes. And here you're going to see a real world example of where the emboss is really going to uh, help with some of your design. So once again, I'm going to create a sketch on this top face here. Um, it really doesn't matter on which plane, but I, I like to keep things like off my model. So I'm just doing it at the very, very top. I want to project this uh, edge right here and create a rectangle. Now um, the rectangle is supposed to be 0.1 by um, 0.25. Okay. I'll kind of zoom up so you can kind of see that. Oops. And I want it to be centered. Well, here's a neat tip. I'm going to say coincident. I want this corner here to be coincident with that uh, projected edge. And now if I grab this rectangle, you'll see that that corner is staying on that edge. So if I were to come in and say coincident this to this, you'll see it kind of jump over. It has to be centered now for those two points to be touching that circle. So you can see that it's actually uh, fully constrained. Okay. Now, in this case, I am, because I'm going to do the emboss command, I am going to do a pattern in my sketch. Okay. I usually tell you, keep your sketches simple, um, do patterns in 3D, but because we're going to use this sketch to emboss, I'm going to do it in my sketch. So, circular pattern, I'll draw a box around my rectangle. What's my center point? You can see the nice preview. And as I increase, you can kind of see the preview update. I'm going to type in 12. So we get 12 of them that go all the way around. OK. So now what we're going to do is use the emboss command. So I'll finish my sketch. And you'll see that this is kind of floating up in space. And you'll see why pattern on a path is kind of difficult, because this is a, a curvy surface in multiple directions in this direction it kind of smiles up in this direction it kind of frowns down so um, so I'm gonna come in here and say emboss I'm just gonna draw a selection box around my profile like so now I don't need it to um, do this these inside surfaces so I'm just gonna unselect those three profiles really quick so I'm just left with these around here it's asking for the face. I'm going to go ahead and click on this face. Now, be a little bit careful. If tangent chain is turned on, notice when I hover over this face, it kind of highlights a bunch of different faces. And that's because of the fillets, it's able to tangent onto those vertical faces. Well, I don't want it to, so I'm going to turn that option off. And now it's only letting me select this face here. 
So I'm going to click on that face and boom, just like that, it takes those rectangles and embosses them in the correct orientation all the way around. Okay. Um, the correct height is 0 0.02, so I'll say OK. And there we go. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is add some fillets to these edges. And you'll notice I have to zoom way in, and I would have to select a ton of edges and tons of faces and stuff like that. So I'm going to show you another command that I don't show all that often. In the fillet command, by default, it's set to fillet. And you pick the edges that you want to fillet and all that kind of stuff. Well, right here, I'm going to change this to rule fillet. And you'll notice my menu changes a little bit. And what this is basically going to do is I can specify certain features. So I'm going to click on this emboss feature. Okay. And then I can say I want it to affect all of the edges or maybe just between certain faces and features. Well, I want it to affect all of the edges. So I'm going to leave that to all edges. I selected my emboss feature. And then you'll notice that we have rounds and fillets, rounds or fillets. Okay, so let me zoom up here to kind of explain what this means. Okay, so a round is like when we're going to round this corner. We're going to go from this flat face to this flat face. We're going to round the corner. So same thing here. We're going to round the corner that way. But when we go to do this edge, that's going to be a fillet, right? So you can kind of think of a round as removing material and a fillet as an adding material. And in this example, we're going to have to do it in two steps. So I'm going to do the rounds first. And then I'll zoom out so you can kind of see what's going to happen here. I'll type in my distance of 0 0.009. Now you'll notice it's going to take a minute to think, but look what it did. Okay, and you can see it did it on all of my embossed feature. So it did all of the rounds, just like I showed. Okay, and it did it on all of them. I'll say OK. It, it's calculating, so sometimes this takes a moment. Then I'll do the exact same thing again. I'll say fillet, rule fillet. What are my features? This time I'm going to say my emboss and my fillet feature. Now you might get an error message as it's like live calculating. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, so I, I'm telling it to do the emboss and the fillet. Then I'm going to tell it not to do the rounds, but this time to do the fillet. So let me zoom up here so you can kind of see what's going to happen. I'll say fillets only. So it's taking into consideration the existing rounds, and now it's going to do the fillets if it can. So again, lots of edges it's having to figure out, but there you go. You can kind of see that it created the fillets all the way around. So pretty cool tip to create a lot of complex geometry all at once. Now you'll notice it's thinking, okay? And sometimes you'll get that gray progress bar that goes across. Um, but I know that this is done and this is complete. I don't want Fusion to have to keep recalculating those fillets every single time. So I'm going to suppress these. So I'm going to right mouse click and say suppress features. So I still have my emboss, but now it's not going to calculate those fillets every single time. And I can unsuppress them at the end. Okay. Okay. Hopefully you found that tip pretty useful. Okay, so the next thing I want to do um, is there is, let me turn my camera back on. Um, we're going to start working on the inside here pretty soon, but you'll notice there's a flat across the top and there's a flat across the bottom. 
So we're going to do that pretty much the same method that I did last time. Um, so I'm going to edit that last sketch that we just did because I don't need to create a new sketch for this. I'm just going to use that this last sketch. I'll do a rectangle, center rectangle off the center. And again, I want to make sure the height this time is point, I'm sorry, 3.05. And you can see how that's kind of locked in and it's going to shave off the top and the bottom. I don't really care what this size is. But we want to basically remove this geometry that you see up here and down here. Okay. Now this time, um, instead of creating uh, another profile or whatever, I'm just going to use this and split my body. So we'll come in here and say split body. What's the body to split? What's the tool? And I'm just going to click on this outside rectangle. Okay. And you can kind of see a little shading going on, what it's going to do. Watch what happens over here in my bodies folder when I say OK. I now have three separate bodies. We use that rectangle to basically split these off. Now I don't need these little areas, so I'm going to right click and say remove. I want to remove them out of my design. Okay, same thing with this guy here. I'll remove and I've just removed that out of my design. Okay, this gives us those flats that we needed. So now let's jump into the inside of the part and I'm going to create an offset plane. So under construct, offset plane, I'm just gonna grab this inside bottom face and start to drag up a certain distance and according to the drawing, I need to go up 0.45. We're creating basically, um, let me just show you, instead of you keep jumping to the camera, we're basically creating this region right here, okay? Okay, so obviously we're gonna reuse existing geometry to help us out. So I'm gonna project the existing circle and then I'm going to offset that a particular distance. Uh, in this case, uh, 0 0.05. Okay. And now you can see how that sketch is kind of floating up in space a little bit. I can now come in and say extrude. I like to start to drag in the correct direction. And again, instead of clicking on the face, I'm going to say to object and have it extrude to that face and it's going to join. You can kind of see that there. So I've just added that feature. Okay. Now I couldn't have done this earlier because remember this was like a solid body. You know, I couldn't have really added that into my profile very easily. So that's why we're kind of doing this as a secondary step. The next thing I want to do is create these ribs and they are offset at a funky angle. In fact, well, they're at 45. So I need to draw um, a rib at a 45 degree angle. So to do this, I'm going to go under Construct and say Plane at Angle. Okay. Then it's asking for a line. And you'll notice my origin line goes right through the center. Let's pretend that it didn't. If that was the case, I could come in here and create an axis through the cylinder, okay? So I could say axis through cylinder and it would create an axis. And I could come in here and say plane at an angle. I could click that line. So I, this one already existed, but I just showed you another method there. We'll just use the axis. And now you'll see that it's putting a plane through that line, but I can now set that angle to be whatever I want. In this case, I want it to be 45 degrees. I'll say OK. Like I said, this model, nothing was really symmetric or whatever. It was kind of interesting. OK. Um, what we're going to do is create this, these little 
ribs that you see, oops, too far, this little rib that you see right here. And again, we're going to use the rib command to do this because you can see it kind of wraps up and over and it touches curved surfaces and another curved surface over here. So let's let the software do the hard work. We'll keep it simple. Okay, so I now have this plane that I can create a sketch on. Let me kind of rotate it back around so we can kind of see what this looks like. Now I need to capture some information. So you might think, oh, use the project command. And you're mostly correct. If I say project and I go to hover over this face, you'll notice that it's projecting um, geometry onto that plane. Like if I hover over this edge here, because it's a curved surface, it kind of flows up and down. That's why you get that little figure eight and all that kind of stuff. And this is not what I'm looking for. I basically want my uh, plane to slice right through. So I'm going to say project intersect and check this out. Now when I hover over like this circular face, it is only going to project where this face intersects this plane. You can kind of see as I hover over, over other things, that's what I get. So I'm going to project that face there. And then notice same thing here. If I click on that face there and say OK, it projected just where this plane slices through the geometry. And that's exactly what I need in this case. So I can now kind of draw my rib profile. So I'm just going to come over a little bit, down a little bit, and over. And you'll see it actually snap to that edge. I'll throw some dimensions on here, um, 0.1 over, 0.25 down, and we can see that that is constrained. It's not a closed sketch, but that's okay because we'll say rib. What are my curves? I'll click on that guy there, and you can see it automatically creates that rib for me and it's touching the curved surfaces, touching the curved surfaces. All I have to do is type in the thickness uh, 0 0.04. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, I don't want a sharp edge right here so I'll do a quick fillet. We're almost done here guys. Um, so 0 0.05 Okay, and then I want to reuse that. So let's do a 3D pattern. So I'm going to say pattern, circular pattern. Again, making sure my features are set. And I'm going to select the rib and the fillet feature. What's my axis? I could click on that axis line if I want to. And you'll see I get a preview of three. I'm going to crank this up to a quantity of six. I love the little preview. kind of shows that, sure enough, they're not intersecting any of the existing holes. I'll say OK, and boom. We now have a rib feature. I'm going to unselect these faces real quick. Um, that goes all the way around. It's all one body. And think about how long that would take to do it with other methods. So. Uh, I just think the, the rib feature, the pattern feature, really does speed things up. Okay, the last last thing we're going to do are these little hole standoffs. You see there's four of them, two at the top, two at the bottom. And of course, they're not equally spaced or anything like that. <laughs> Story of my life. So I'm um, going to just create a quick sketch to do that. I'll turn off my construction. I'm just going to create a sketch on this bottom face. And so I'm going to show you another neat little tip that hopefully you know about. I know I'm going to need four of them. And they're all equally sized. So I'm just going to draw a circle here and type in 0.2. And then I'm going to do a circle again and type in 0.1. Okay. So I've spent the time creating those. Well, now I can just draw a box around them and do Control-C for copy. 
control V for paste okay and now you can see I've just created a copy of that sketch geometry so I'm gonna kinda of put it where I think it needs to be I'll say okay control V again I don't even have to copy it again because it's kinda of like in my clipboard so I'm gonna put it over here somewhere say okay control V one more time so you can copy and paste sketch geometry so okay then all I have left to do is just throw some dimensions on here so for example um, and hopefully this goes fairly quick I'll do uh, 0.85 and from here to here I'll put it off to the side so you can kind of see it that's going to be 0.5 from here to here and again like I said none of these dimensions um, were equal or whatever so that's 0.5 so I am having to create sketches to kind of you know constrain my sketch to kind of define where things are supposed to be um, and you'll notice that this whole time we've we spent quite a bit of time making sure that all of our sketches are constrained. Um, that way, if we make a change, we we're going to get expected results. So I'll say one, and then I'll go here, um, 0.8, and here, um, 0.75. Again, these are all on the drawing. And I'm going to say finish sketch. Okay, now you're going to see something interesting here. I'm going to select these profiles. Come on. That profile there. That profile there. This profile. So we're basically creating the, uh, the standoff and the hole at the same time. I'm going to start to say extrude. Okay, and tell it to go in that direction. Well, notice it's going to this curved surface in here so we're gonna use our popular to object and I'm gonna click on that face and you'll notice two of them worked but two of them didn't okay why is that well that has to do with this chain faces so you'll notice and it's kinda of hard to see the with the icon but the extrusion stops and doesn't wrap to this other edge while this guy you can see it extends to this first edge and to that second edge so I'm gonna click on this chain faces and you'll notice that those did extend and if we zoom up real close it's probably because these wrap into this fillet right here and so it couldn't just float in space it was actually stopping at this fillet because it couldn't quite reach the floor and that's why it didn't work the first time but by saying hey go ahead and wrap around in fact I'll bet you the same thing over here yeah you can kinda of see it just barely cuts into that fillet so if you ever have that situation where some of them work and some of them don't it's probably this chain faces and then I also want to do an offset plane of um, minus 0.4 so my sketch is on this top face but we're saying go 0.4 in and then extrude so I really like that offset plane option and we are done that is the end of this part okay then I could come back and unsuppress these um, I know I was getting some questions from Angelo so let me review these really quick um, Give me just a one second. So a question from Aol. Um, so why rib and not web? Um, how does it differ? That's an excellent question. So if I hover over the web command, you can kind of see the web command is like an intern. You can almost think of it as like an internal um, rib, if you want to think of it that way. Okay, whereas the rib is more like an external, so you can see like this L-shaped bracket or whatever. So um, in this case here, I just had a simple profile, and, and it's on the external, it's on the outside of this part, and so it's going to create a rib to, to connect to the nearest geometry. 
So that's really the kind of the difference between the two. And that's why I sometimes stumble. I'll say, okay, let's create a rib, when in reality we're creating a web. They're pretty much the same thing. It's just one's more internal and one's more external. Um, so Al also asked, where are the drawings coming from? Did Brad model them? Yes. Um, so when I go through, I, I practice. I, I model this, and then I use that model to create these drawings. And I've done a live stream on um, how I create these drawings. Uh, in fact, um, Angelo and I did one on a spark plug uh, bottle opener um, where he had the design um, and then I created a drawing from that and he did the cam. It's, it's kind of a fun series if you haven't watched it. I definitely look for spark plug bottle opener um, and I show how I created the drawings. Okay. Um, and, then, and then another question, uh, Al said, I wish I could see how he did this the first time. That's an excellent um, question. So yes, I, I do practice these. And what I basically do, I take the 3D model um, and I take my digital calipers and I measure everything and model it up. And as I'm doing that, I'm, you know, for example, these little indentations that were on the top, I was like, well, what's the best method? And I tried three or four different methods. I tried pattern on a path. Um, I used emboss. I tried, you know, I tried different methods to do that. I'm not saying the way that I'm doing this is the absolute correct method. I like to show different ways of doing things. Um, you know, what would happen if you had shelled this later on in your design process? Who knows? Give it a try. You know, it just I was. In this example, I was trying to highlight some certain things like the rule fillet. I've never really shown that before. And this was a prime example where that really comes into play. So, so great questions. Um, I don't see any more. So with that, I want to thank everybody for attending. Again, the, the outline and the drawing is in the description of the video. Uh, and I hope to see you on a future live stream. Have fun fusioning.